the Gilda's maximum lawyers community of legal entrepreneurs who are taking their businesses and lives to the next level. As a Guild member, you'll build relationships, be held accountable, and learn strategies specifically designed to get you unstuck and accelerate your plan for growth. Members are also granted exclusive access to masterminds hosted around the country. Our next event is coming up, and we're heading to Scottsdale, Arizona. There's something truly magical about the power of these in-person connections where real-time breakthroughs happen. Picture this. You're surrounded by like-minded law firm owners tackling your business and mindset challenges together. The energy is electric, the insights are transformative, and the results are game-changing. Investing in yourself is the best decision you'll ever make. The knowledge, strategies, and breakthroughs you'll gain are priceless assets that will supercharge your practice and propel you forward. Join the Guild and secure your ticket to Scottsdale at the best possible price by visiting maxlawevents.com. Run your law firm the right way. way. This is the Maximum Lawyer Podcast. Maximum Lawyer Podcast. Your hosts, Jim Hacking and Tyson Mutrix. Let's partner up and maximize your firm. Welcome to the show. Welcome back to the Maximum Lawyer Podcast. I'm Jim Hacking. And I'm Tyson Mutrix. What up, Jimmy? Good morning, Tyson. I'm getting ready to go out of town tomorrow. I'm going to take a week off in San Diego with Amani and the kids. And so I'm just excited to be here with you. I'm going to clean my office a little bit, get everything ready. And then I am completely unplugging for every day of the trip except for one Wednesday. I'm going to work in the San Diego office just for that one day, that way keeping my work and vacation separate. And you and I are going to record a podcast together on that day too. I know you want to record this. So the people that are not in the Guild, we're actually live in the Guild today, and this is our morning uh, meeting show. I know Jimmy wants to turn this into a podcast episode, but there's a couple things. I, I'm going to throw off your your plan a little bit because there's some things I want to throw out there like we normally do. But man, I got a crazy day today. It's like birthday parties and karate and soapbox derby. It's just like a bunch of stuff. So it's a fun little day. And then Jackson and I are going to do a little Father Sunday tomorrow, which is going to be fun. Oh, what are you going to do? I think we're going to go go-karting and do a few other, you know, fun. I'm going to feed him some junk food. You know, that fun stuff. You know? That'll be fun. Yeah. So it was funny. The other day we we're in the pool and he's like, Daddy, can we do a Father Sunday? Absolutely we can. That sounds awesome. So I haven't nice. what we're going to do completely. But so you said you had a topic. I'm curious what it is. You ready? I don't know. I don't know with you sometimes. You're not angry, which is mm-hmm. good. So it, I'm I'm ready, though. My topic is, in a world of abundant choice, why should somebody pick your firm? That is my question for today. And here's where I'm coming from. So, you know, I'm older than you and I'm old and I turned 50 last year. And I'm old enough to remember when there were three television channels, three. And you had to get off your butt and go turn the channel. And you could either watch ABC, CBS or NBC. And of course, we have these shows from back in the day, like Cheers and MASH, and that have 60 Minutes that have these, you know, awesome ratings that no one will ever achieve again because there are now a thousand channels, right? And so I've been thinking about this a lot lately. You know, I, I really like to watch my kids and sort of see how they consume content and what they like to do. So, you know, when I was growing up, what I would do at night is I would either listen on the radio or watch on television the Cardinal game if it was on. You know, now every single Cardinal game is on. And I came home and my son, who used to watch baseball every single night, he was playing on his PlayStation and he was playing, what is it called? It's like, no, it's 2K, it's basketball. And he was playing basketball, but he wasn't even playing NBA basketball. He was playing a basketball game where you can create your own players and you play five on five basketball with your friends and you're a different person. So he had actually made a seven foot tall, 300 pound NFL. <laughs> and he named it after an NFL lineman that he loves. And he was playing his friends in basketball. So it's not even using the NBA players. It's using that. And so, you know, that, that's sort of one thing. And then, you know, there's this gas station across the street from my office. I've been in this office for five years. I've never been in that gas station. Not once, not to make a phone call, not to change air, my tires, not to get gas. And there's a QT up the street. Right. And I go out of my way to go to the QT. Well, when, by the way, QTs are amazing. Yeah. They're, they're totally, I will, I've got a theory as to why you don't uh, go to the gas station across from, from your work. It's a, a really quick theory. 
I think you're in such a rush to get to the office. You don't want to stop. And you're so uh, in such a rush to leave the office, not necessarily rush, but you're like, you're like a, a goal in mind, right? Your goal is to leave. So you're leaving and you don't want to stop at a gas station right after you left. And then the same thing, you don't want to stop the gas station right, to, right before you're to your destination. It's my theory. No, not, not buying no. it. I mean, it's a little crappy rundown gas station, the kind that existed back in the 70s when I was a kid. They haven't done no updating, no modernization. But you'd think that, like, I'd be running out of gas sometime or I'd have or I'd have low air, to air in my tires. You'd think that over the last six years since we've been here that I'd be over there at least once or twice. Never even thought about it. And I sit there and I watch them, and it's a very, very slow, slow place. You go to Quick Trip, it's like a little factory. And yeah, so the and, question- and really quick, I want to I I juxtapose the Quick Trip really quick. To like my parents' gas station. So my parents have the gas station. It's a but it's a garage attached to a gas station, mm-hmm. and it's 100 percent full service. They differentiated themselves by like they've got a snack section that's the size of like basically that entire cashier section at QT. That's like gigantic. Like it's tiny, but they have people that stop all the time because they've got they it, they're full service. They wash people's windshields. They fill up their tires. They add fluids, all that kind of stuff. So it's yeah, it, it, you just you got to find a way to differentiate yourself. I'm glad you added that nuance to this because that bastard across the street hasn't done either. He hasn't made himself like QT and he hasn't made it like your mom and dad's. Right. And I mean, maybe he thinks he has, but I mean, he's three buildings down from one of the busiest corners in St. Louis County, Manchester and Lindbergh Boulevard. I mean, you can't get much better than that. And they've literally done nothing to that place since I've moved in. And, and there's nothing that makes it stand out. So do you want to be the law firm that's like the gas station across the street from me? Or do you want to be like your dad's and mom's place or like QT? You've got to make a decision. And you got to say, when there's all this choice out there, and there's only more choice coming. There's only more choice coming. There's new lawyers coming. There's people that are coming into the system that get technology better than you. They get marketing better than you. So what are you doing? to make yourself different and noteworthy and selectable. You know, I was talking to Matt last night. We, we had a lead that was a pr- uh, pretty good case last night. It was like eight o'clock. And we were talking about how, like what differentiates us actually. And we actually have a really happy blend between technology and that personal touch because too much of one is a, probably a bad thing. You can't completely automate everything and you can't make everything just hands on. So it is, it is, it was kind of funny because we were actually having this conversation a little bit last night and this is your, you had, I had no idea what your topic was today. We were kind of talking about that. So, cause, and cause we really do, we've, I mean, you've known this about me, we've leveraged technology for years now, but we, we've, we've had to back that off to make sure that we had that personal touch as well. But what, like, what do you think it is about your firm that differentiates you? Well, certainly one is the YouTube. You know, I spend so much time educating clients. I, I, you know, we've made this bridge of the DC clients that we inherited and the clients that we have at Hacking Law. And I think that the paralegals in Washington, DC have been complaining about a real level of abuse that they get from some of these clients from DC. And I think it's because the lawyer was looking for clients in a, in a lower economic class that that sort of view the lawyer as part of the problem, not as part of the solution. And I think that when you deal with clients who are educated and who understand the process and who know how hard it is and how you're trying to help them, that I think that's what helps us stand out is that we get a client base that appreciates what we do. And that's because we educate them. We spend so much time teaching them about the process and how it all works, both in my marketing and then once they become a client that it really sets us up for less conflict and more connectedness with our clients. So I've got a, I've got a, a comment and a question. It, it's interesting. We've got, I, most of our clients are in a higher socioeconomic class for a variety of reasons, but if you were to rank them and everything, but and it, it, it's inter- it is interesting about what you said, because if you have, if we have clients that are, are making less money, right. Or, or no money, it causes a lot of problems for us. It's not because they don't make a lot of money. It's what's well, kind of is. It's because that strain on them from a car crash is so much greater than someone that is, like, say, let's say, wealthy, really, really, really wealthy, because they can absorb that impact. And so, if they're in a lower socioeconomic class, it is a total drain on us. And and we don't intentionally target these people 
I think generally people that access us or people through the internet who, that means they have access to the, uh, to computers and cell phones and all that kind of stuff. So I think just it's an automatic weeding out uh, filter for us, but the, it is a, it's interesting how there is a total drain on the firm whenever we have some of those clients that are, that are in a little bit of lower of a socio socioeconomic class. So that's my comment. The question is, and this is one of my topics I would ask you about. That's why I'm going to kind of derail this conversation a little bit. That's fine. I'm ready to go. That's fine. We can move on. But I, I, want, I, mean, I want to stay on. And I want to stay on this, but I want to just quick, quick side route. What do you do with your older videos? Do you keep those up? Because it's funny. What we've been doing is um, we've got a TV in our in our office, and when people come in, it's got our YouTube channel, so it's playing playing my videos. And sometimes <laughs> I see these videos pop up of me from ten years ago. And I kind of like, kind of cringe, you know, it's like, oh man. And I can, it's funny. I could see like whenever I was, I was carrying a little bit too much weight, you know, I can see whenever I was running, I get like, it's interesting. You can like look at yourself over the last 10 years and see, like, oh, that looked good there. Not so much there. I should have used that background there. So my thought is leave them up, but I'm just curious if you've done any research on that. Oh, well, no, I leave them all up. I mean, we get, we get views and comments from videos from five or six years ago. I've, the only ones I've taken down are the ones about deportation because we're not doing deportation anymore. But generally, I mean, I think it's sort of funny to see how different I look in my videos. I mean, some of them I look like a little kid. And so I, I sort of and, and they're cringeworthy, you know, like we have those ones where my head is sort of cut off at the bottom and we have the ones where I'm talking real slow and quietly. And then we have ones where I'm just sort of, you know, how I get all crazy. So. Yeah, we, we leave them all up there. And and as far as showing them off in the office, I don't know if we're ever going to have clients again in the office. So I, I I right before the pandemic, I had outfitted our waiting room with a really nice television and signed up for Hulu and everything so that we could have the news on and everything. And that I mean, I guess we'll have clients back in the office, but I'm not in any rush for that. No, me neither. Have you heard? Max Lacan is back live and in person this fall at the Ameristar Casino Resort and Spa in St. Charles, Missouri. We can't wait to gather with hundreds of you to reunite with OG Maximum lawyers and finally meet the newer community members. This event is for you if you're searching for the best ways to scale your law firm and you're craving connections with like-minded legal entrepreneurs. Max Khan 2021 has a full day exclusive Guild Member Mastermind Day on Monday, October 11th, with the two day general conference on Tuesday, October 12th, and Wednesday, October 13th. These two days will be full of actionable, proven, strategic content from experts that have been in your shoes. There's no conceptual thought or theoretical strategies behind any of these sessions. Everything you hear at MaxLawCon 2021 are tested, proven tactics to get more clients and maximize your firm. That's why we put people on stage who have actually done it. Hear the latest ideas, strategies, and insights from our speakers. To learn more and grab your ticket today, head to maxlacon.com. All right, so let's get this thing back on track. So the topic, I'm going to do the, your, your typical reset. I, I won't do as good of a job as you do, Jim, because you do a great job of a reset. But today we're talking about how you differentiate your firm to make sure you stand out. And what was the exact question you said at the very beginning? In a world of abundant choice... What in the world is going to make a potential client choose your firm over all other options? I think, yeah, people, yeah. I, think, I think people need to be obsessed about that question, obsessed about it, especially if they're in something hyper competitive like nursing home litigation or car accidents. Or, I mean, you've got to figure out a way that should be. I mean, that should be at the top of your mind. Like I would I would print it out and put it by my mirror in the bathroom that you've got to be thinking about that all day, every day. So I'm not going to reveal what this is yet because other I don't want other firms to beat us to the punch of this. There's the big the big scary firm coming into town that's in you know Morgan and Morgan, and we've actually for about a month or so we've been planning a marketing campaign around that because to differentiate differentiate ourselves because they've they've come into town and they're like they're kind of throwing their weight around. We're bigger, we're badder. I mean, their commercials are saying you know we're the biggest, so we're the best kind of a thing. And then you've got Brown and Crouppen, which is like, they are the local. The St. Louis. Yeah, they're the local, right? So they're, they're saying, you know, we're the biggest, we're the baddest, these people from out of town. It's really interesting. And, I, and I've said from the beginning, the moment I said Morgan Morgan's coming to town, is Brown and Crouppen is going to fight a big part of our battle. And that's great. I've always been a fan of Brown and Crouppen. They don't practice the same type of law that we do, or they do, but 
not the same way, but I like that they fight off these firms that come into town. They've run them out of town before, which is fine. <laughs> it's great. I mean, remember the I, pink buses? Yeah. And you know, the pink, that firm is still around, but they've pulled a lot of their money out, right? Morgan Morgan's got way more money than that, that pink bus firm. I know, I know the name, but I'm not going to say it because I think they're a joke. But they, uh, the Morgan & Morgan, they're not a joke. They try cases. They're a legit firm. But luckily, Brenna Group is going to do some fighting. But we still gonna have to, we're going to have to differentiate ourselves. They're going to put their straw to the milkshake, and they're going to start sucking on it really hard to try to pull all those cases out. So we've got to differentiate ourselves. And so we've got, I've got a plan. I'm just not going to mention what it is yet because I think so, it's, it's clever. So when I was in college, I was in the world's lamest fraternity. We were, like, scared of girls. We sat around and drank and talked to each other and we would have these parties and like you know like six girls would show up so anyway we were just sort of farting around not really paying attention and then what happened was pi kappa alpha national fraternity came in and they said we're going to start a new chapter here and they went to all the non-greek leaders on campus and said we're going to make you guys the super fraternity well man when that happened that's when we finally kicked it into gear We totally swung into action. We had our biggest pledge classes for like two years straight, and we totally grew the fraternity by about 300%. So I would love it. I mean, if I were you, you you can have a lot of fun with mocking Morgan and Morgan. Like I would like I would have a whole campaign ready and I would make it a regular topic to talk about. You know, they don't care about you. They just want the money. They're going to sell you out quick. I would think it's a great foil. And, you know, to me, the best marketing is marketing that markets against something else as opposed to, you know, for something else. Yeah. And I get when you, I, you have, to have to be careful because of ethics rules and everything. But we've got and I really don't want to tease too much because I, I want to. It, it's, 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 it's a fun little thing, but it's definitely going to make it clear how we differentiate ourselves. And the other thing is, is I'll be honest with you, I respect that firm. So I'm not going to attack them. But I'm going to differentiate ourselves and show and highlight our strong points as opposed to showing their weak points. But and I, and I also don't want to take away from our boogeyman. Our boogeyman is the insurance company. It's not Morgan and Morgan. Morgan and Morgan does a lot for the legal community. So I'm not going to really try to kick them. And I also don't want to hit a bee's nest and have a bunch of swarm of bees around me either. I don't want to create that either. But I am going to find a way to or I found a way to differentiate ourselves. It's just a matter of implementing that plan. So you can, you can have you can have two boogeymen. It's okay that, to have two. You can have the insurance true. company, and and you can do that one on the on the down low, or you know, like in the in the internal marketing that you do, like emailing your list and stuff like that. Stuff that's not necessarily public. It could go public, and of course, I don't know if kicking the hornet's nest in in that situation wouldn't be bad. I mean, if you get a pissing match with Morgan and Morgan, that might not be the worst thing in the world. Yeah, that's very very true. That's actually not a not a terrible point. So. Going forward, you have, let's turn this back around on you for a second. All right. You you have gone into Washington, D.C. You have gone into your dream home, San Diego. D.C. is a different situation, so you don't necessarily have to differentiate yourself off the bat. Not yet. How are you going to different, because you've, I'm going to start kicking in the shins on this. How are you going to differentiate yourself in San Diego so you can start generating more clients in San Diego, because if I'm a someone that's and I honestly, it's I don't even know how this works. I guess if I'm living in San Diego and I want to bring over someone from another country, why would I hire Jim Hacking, who's in St. Louis, Missouri, as opposed to Mark Harlan, who is in California? My answer to that question is one is that our target audience is sort of upper middle class and middle class Muslims. So that's a niche within the niche within San Diego. So we're going to be reaching out to the mosques and I have a plan to, and it sort of tracks the way that we got started in the first place is by doing my lawsuits. We're going to help a lot of people at a very low cost to them to try to get their naturalization or their other cases moving. And by doing that, we're going to build our list and we're going to stand out and we're going to be able to make connections in a town that we don't really know anybody. That's one. And then the other is, you know, we always focus on our international students. Now, you can kick me in the shins all you want about San Diego. But as a firm, we made a decision when the Washington, D.C. opportunity came up to put San Diego on the back burner. And San Diego shall remain on the back burner until the end of 2021. So here's why I'm kicking you in the shins. Yeah. 
you want to live in San Diego, right? Yeah. Your long-term goal is San Diego. I don't like putting things on the back burner. So that's why I'm, I'm just, it's fine. Listen, it's just, you be a nice little gentle reminder every so oh, often. Okay. And, that's and that's good. good. That way you don't forget about it. I got a, I've got a friend. He it wants to be a professional wrestler. He is a big dude. He has actually gone to wrestling school. And whenever COVID started, he obviously they you know you don't want to be around other people like hugging on each other and you know, oh, exactly. But he's not yet gone back, and he's gotten the vaccine. Everyone there's gotten the vaccine. I've been giving him a lot of hell about it, and like it, he's 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 got a job where he's making money and he's comfortable. And I told him like, hey man, like if this is your true dream. You need to focus on it and you need to get back on track. So I'm going to do the same thing with you. And, and uh, That's fair. I love it. Thank you for doing it. But I'm going to be the John Morgan. That's what, that's what I'm going to be. I'm going to be Morgan and Morgan of the immigration world. That's it, baby. I like it. Very cool. What do you want to talk about? You said you had some things you wanted to talk about. Well, I sneakily snuck both of them in. So oh. I, I, I covered them. So I'm good to go. I, I got them both. We did, I mean, and it, it was it was good. I was able to fit them in during our chat about uh, making sure we differentiate ourselves. I, I will say this. Let's say you're just starting out. Right. You're not going to be, you know, poking the bear like Morgan Morgan. Maybe you are, I guess. But what would you say? What's the process you think you should go through to, to really set yourself apart? Because it's not an easy exercise. This is something that can take some time. What's the exercise you'd go through if you're a new lawyer to differentiate yourself? Well, I think number one, you have to survey the market and you have to see what are other people saying. And I would imagine that if you look around, most people are saying the same stupid shit and they're all saying, I'm the best or I work the hardest or I love my clients the most. And I think so. Number one, you have to say to yourself, I don't want to be like everybody else and to do sort of the opposite. That's that's one. So you really have to understand it. Number two, I'm convinced that you have to have a niche within your niche. You can't just rely on this is me. This is what I'm going to do. And then the, the third thing is, is that you have to find that starving crowd. You you never want to be trying to create a market that doesn't exist. You know, we, we've called it the Anthony problem. I saw it in a quote from Breakthrough Advertising the other day is that, you know, you want that starving crowd. You want people who need what you want, and then you have to go find them. So when you say, I'm going to put my flag in the in the ground and say, this is what I'm doing better make damn sure that people care that that's what you want to do. I think that's great advice. Sorry. Saturday morning noises, you know, like people are mowing the lawn outside, get the, you know, kids like are waking up. That's exactly right. We are going to wrap things up before I do. I want to remind everyone that if you want to go to the conference, you might, might want to get your tickets pretty darn soon because we're getting close to selling out maxlawcon.com. That's maxlawcon.com. Join us in St. Charles, Missouri, which is very, very close to St. Louis, Missouri. You're just going the opposite way of the city. So join us there. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be at a casino, which is going to be fantastic. A lot of people having fun there. If you're interested in the Guild, we are live in the Guild right now. Join us at maxlawguild.com. And if you don't mind, while you're listening to the rest of this episode, leave us a review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts. Jimmy, what's your hack of the week? So I wanted to give a shout out to a couple of people who have bought tickets to the conference. Uh, Rafael Lazaro bought a ticket the other day. Who else? John Strohmeyer. We got people signing up every day. And I just wanted to give a shout out. Daniel Ware, Chris Ragevi. It's fun seeing these notifications. You know, we used to uh, message each other every time we got a ding for somebody signing up. We probably should do that again. That was always fun when we did that. But it's fun seeing people register 24 hours. You know, we had a registration at like three in the morning the other day. And I'm like, well, that's funny because you never know what it is that makes people raise their hand and say that they're interested. So I'm just excited. And and like you said, I I think this will probably sell out for my tip of the week. So, you know, one of my favorite marketing guys, of course, is Dean Jackson and James Schrampko is another one of them. And I was listening to James talk to a bond Halbert bond. Halbert is the son of Gary Halbert, who's one of the most famous copywriters of all time. And Bond Halbert has a book out. It's a few years old, and it has a very strange title. It's called The Halbert Copywriting Method Part 3. And as far as I know, there's not a part one or a part two. So he wrote part three first. And the, and I have it right here. I just got a copy for myself and a copy for Mackenzie. You can get it on Amazon. I think it's like 15 bucks. And this is all about editing your copy. And there aren't a lot of books about editing your copy. So if you're doing emails to your list, if you're 
spending the time to actually write them, this handbook is really helpful in making your content digestible by your readers. And so I think that there are a lot of great practical tips like shortening your paragraphs, having punchy sentences, you know, sort of switching up your word count. One of the things that he says is that you should always take out the word that if you can. So there's just great practical stuff. I really enjoy it. And it's a, it's a good little book. I love it. So my book is, it's a, you thought it was a old book. It is a new book and well, it's an updated book. Okay. It's still and, an old book. Yes, you can say it's a new book all you want. It's an old book with, it, with an it update. Expanded. It's an expanded version and with a new principle that he's added to it. It is, in my opinion, the greatest marketing book of all time, Influence by Robert Cialdini. And it's expanded and it's interesting and it's, he reads it. So listen to it. He reads it himself and he revisits some of the old things, but he adds to it. If you've not read Influence, okay, you need to stop what you're doing, go back, get influence and, and, and really read that book and or listen to the book, whatever is easier for you, because it is really the bedrock of what everyone else does when it comes to marketing. It's based on the book influence. And that is not an overstatement. That is absolutely true. It's all based upon the principles that he has identified. Okay. So go back and listen or read to that book influence. And it's the expanded version. It's amazing. So definitely check that out. Jimmy, it's been fun, buddy. Cool, man. Have a great weekend. You too. Have fun in San Diego. All right. Later. See you guys. Thanks for listening to the Maximum Lawyer Podcast. To stay in contact with your hosts and to access more content, go to MaximumLawyer.com. Have a great week and catch you next time.